What's up, knife lovers? Welcome back to Blade Stuff. My name is Chad Swindell, and today we're going to talk about how to spot a Benchmade Bug Out clone. Let's do this. Welcome back everybody. Before we take this to the table, I want to make it very clear that this is not a review on a clone. I do not like clones and I do not ever intend on reviewing one on my channel. Now you can love me for that or you can hate me for that. Either one, that's just my opinion. I do not like clones. The way I look at it, these manufacturers have spent years upon years and thousands upon thousands of dollars to develop and to build their brand. And it is unfair for someone to come in, take that product, and then try to mimic it or copycat it or counterfeit it with inferior components. It's just not right. Not only is this not fair for the manufacturer, but I don't feel that this is fair for the consumer either. Now, I'm a knife enthusiast. Several of you guys are as well. And we can all look back and see where our journey and our progression has taken us. More than likely, we started with very economical knives and we built our way up level by level by level, finally getting a brand name knife and then spending more money. Um, what made us do that? For me, it was the quality of the knife that propels me to the next level, to the next knife. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I would hate to rob someone that's just getting into knives of this very joy and excitement. So you may be wondering, well, okay, well, how did you get your hands on a clone then if you don't support clones? Well, that's easy. I had a friend that is, he's had knives for a while, but he's in that level up process where he is looking for more quality tools, more quality knives. And so he was out of town and he ran across a Benchmade bug out. I had just recently reviewed a bug out and so he picked it up and he sent me a text and he was excited, he said I got me a bug out and, uh, and I was excited for him. And when he got back in town, he brought that for me to look at and, and show it off and I had to break the news to him that it was a clone, it was a fake and that someone had ripped him off. And this is just not right, it's just not fair, I can't believe someone would take advantage of someone else like that. And it's for that reason that this video is not a review at all, instead it's to try to show you what to look for so that you can avoid buying a clone. Let's take it to the table. Welcome back everybody, let's get right into it. Today we're going to be talking about a bug out clone. No doubt there's multiple factories out there that are building clones, so they're not all going to look identical to the one that uh, I got my hands on, but this will give you an idea of some of the things to look for. So first, now let's look at the boxes. The boxes are very similar. Benchmade logo in comparison to Benchmade logo. So those are actually pretty close in regards to the logo. Now you can see that one of them does not have a sticker with a model number on it. Logo on the side looks to be pretty decent. This side looks pretty much the same as well. So they definitely went lengths to try to make it look as real as possible. The wording is virtually the same. There's only some very small differences in the two. Now you can see the shade of blue is different. So now let's look and see what is inside the box and see if we can tell any differences inside the box. Let's start with this one right here. All right, so uh, this looks pretty typical for a Benchmade box. Uh, the interior has this styrofoam and it does have a cutout for the knife. You've got uh, the instruction or use and care manual there. And you have got a slip here. The slip is very soft. It does feel like a true Benchmade on that. Now, let's look at this one. Okay, red flag. I've never got a bench made that has been inside a bubble wrap or even a secondary plastic there. So we're gonna set that down. 
So that's a pretty big red flag. Now let's look at this slip or bag. Uh, this is not soft at all, and it is not great quality. The stitching on it's coming apart right there. I'm not sure if you can see any of that. And it's, it's pretty stiff. That is not typical at all. And notice there is no cutout inside the box. So you can see this is the type of interior that you can expect to see out of a true Benchmade. It has the cutout, it has this uh, gray styrofoam type of material in there. Now, how do you know? Well, I can tell you that one. I can show you that one. So I can tell right away, this one's gonna be the real box. We haven't even looked at the knife yet. Okay, so now let's look at both knives side by side. So one of the first things that I noticed when looking at this was the thumb stud color here on this one. It just didn't seem to be the right color gold. Now the thumb studs are supposed to match your backspacer standoffs there. And I would say that these do, but it's just not the right color. Now let's compare that to the real deal here. You can see the thumb stud colors there. Uh, yes, they're a gold, but it's not as yellow as the other one. Yes, the backspacers do match, so that is a check. Now, let's look at the texture of the scales. Let's look at these things side by side. The texture of the scales, it's very, very similar. However, this one is more pronounced than this one. I'm not going to lie, they don't they don't feel that much different, but they look different. So this one here just it has sharper lines to it, and it has just a slight bit of texture on the scales itself that this one over here does not have. All right, so let's look at the logo. The logo on the fake one is a little bit more bold, but uh, honestly, they copied the logo uh, pretty close. Uh, there's a little bit of difference on where the copyright symbol is at and how big it is. But the logo is pretty close, so I don't know that you'd have been able to tell this by looking. Let's look at the steel. Now the real one is on bottom. The fake one is the serrated on the top there. So you can tell that the marking on the steel isn't hideous, so it doesn't necessarily just stand out to you on that. But that is one thing that you can look at when you're when you're buying a knife. And this one, I don't know that you'd have been able to tell that, to be honest. Now, while we're on this side, the clone here, the, the pivot screw is countersunk a lot more than the real one. Again, that's actually kind of a subtle thing, but if you're looking for it, you can find it. Okay, so now let's check the hardware, let's check the screws. We know that a T6 should fit the scale screws. This is the real one. The clip screws. And the thumb stud. Okay, so we're good there. Now, how about this one? I can tell you that I am not even attempting to twist these and they are loose. T6 does fit fits in the thumb stud as well. The thumb stud wasn't loose, but almost all of these screws were loose. So now we've got a T10. Let's go ahead and check the pivot screw. All right, we're good there. And the clone. Uh-oh, T10 does not fit. We're gonna have to go down a size. Let's see here. Let's try a T8 and it's going to be a T8. Let's look at the weight. The real one, 1.87. The clone, 1.82. So there's not a lot of difference there either. So in this particular one, you're not gonna really tell a difference on the weight. Okay, so something else I noticed, here's the real one. Take a look at the plunge grind. Okay, so there's the plunge grind. You can see that it comes all the way back almost to the scales there. There's not a lot of ricasso showing 
here. It's almost all the way to the scales. Now let's compare that to the clone. Now look at there, see the difference? Okay, the plunge grind stops back here and you've got, oh, close to an eighth inch worth of Picasso um, right there, flat area on the blade. So that's another difference that kind of stands out a little bit. Now another thing to look out for is the clip and side by side, these clips are fairly close. It would be hard to identify these without having something to compare it with because they're, they're really, really close. The finish on one is shiny, the other one is more of a matte finish, and that is the majority of the difference that you see there on the clips. So we found some ways to tell by looking at the box. We found some ways to tell by looking at the different colors of things and some of the different aesthetic points of the knife that it can, will identify clone versus real one. But how do they feel? This is the one that stands out more than anything. So let me tell you this. My 17 year old son, handed him to him. He took him out of the box. As soon as he took the clone out of the box, within 15 seconds, he said, yuck. He could tell by the feel that it wasn't right. It wasn't the quality that a Benchmade or a reputable knife manufacturer is known for. It stands out. So let's take a look at some of those things right now. Here's the real one. Let's look at blade play. And yes, I covered this in, in the review. So there's not a lot of blade play. I do feel a little bit, but there's not a whole lot of blade play there. Now let's take a look at this one. Can you hear that? Not only is there a tremendous amount of blade play, you can hear it. So this thing is just loose. Now, let me show you this. Here's the real one. If I hit it hard, you're gonna hear a rattle on it. But if I don't hit it hard, you don't hear anything. Now watch this. That's rattling inside there. So let's talk about blade centering. Here is the real one. Okay, you got good blade centering on that. And yes, you can take it just like any other knife and you can maneuver that knife back and forth. Okay, that's taking some pressure. I know that video may not show that, but I'm putting some pressure on that. Now let's look at this one. It is loose as all get out in there. That's what was rattling when I was barely tapping against my palm. The, that blade is just slopping around in there. You can tell it is not built well at all. Another thing to look for is the axis lock. Take a look at the axis lock and how easily that it works. This is the real one. I can take it. Okay, that works pretty easy. If I chose to only use one side, also works easy. And the other side works easy. That's the real one. Now let's try the same test on the clone. Here is the clone, With both of them together. Not terrible. Maybe a little bit of resistance there that shouldn't be there, but it's not terrible. However, if I just do one, that's a lot harder to do. It tries to bind up in there and you can see it get a little bit crooked in there. Now, if I try the other side, it's extremely hard to do. So there's a big difference in feel on the two axis locks. Scale material. If you watched my review, I talked about the grivery and the characteristics of grivery. And I also talked about the fact that it just feels plastic. So I'm not a huge fan on grivery, but here is the real one. Now watch when I put some flex on this knife. Pay close attention to the scales as well. Okay, I'm actually putting a good amount of pressure on that. Now let's look at this. Look at that, you can see, I'm almost afraid this is gonna come apart. Hear that? It's making noises. You can tell easily by the feel on that. So let me show you a different perspective on that. So here's the real one. Okay, when I when I pinch here, I've got a fair amount of pressure on there. Yes, they move. And yes, they move more than I wish they did. But I put the same amount of pressure on the clone, they touch. They actually touch. So this is definitely an inferior scale to the Grivery. 
let me show you here. This is the, the card. Now I can't tell you that this is a real card. This actually came out of the clone box. But this will show you that I can take this and actually hold that by pinching the scales together. That is ridiculous. Just a quick recap, take a look at the box. Uh, look for the, the cutout inside the box. Uh, look at the slip. Uh, once you get your hands on the knife, see how the knife's packaged. If you got bubble wrap or cellophane, red flag. Take a look at the color of the thumb studs and the standoffs. That was a dead giveaway to me. That's the one that stood out to me and made me question, whoa, um, we have a problem without feeling it. Now, once you feel it, there is no question in my mind um, because there is just such a difference in, in these knives. So when it comes down to the battle of the real bug out versus the clone, that's where the clone needs to go. The real one wins hands down. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something from it. If you did enjoy our content, I invite you to hit that like button down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Be sure and hit that bell so that you are notified of future videos. You can also find me on Instagram where I provide visual knife content there as well. And thank you very much to those who have already subscribed. I couldn't do this without you. And keep a lookout. We intend on having plenty more videos coming. And as always, God bless and keep it sharp. Oh,